Welcome everyone to the Life Podcast. My name is Dreamcatcher the Prince. My co-host is Deuce Wayne. A Town Stand Up. Co-host Ant Man. Philly represent. Alright. For those who haven't heard our podcast yet, this is the Life Podcast, which is an acronym for us for living independent and functioning in our environment. The purpose of this podcast is pretty much have all three of us give our perspective of what's going on in life at the moment. And it's more like a barbershop style talking amongst us three and give our perspectives on what's going on in the world. We talk from sports to politics to movies to music. You name it, we talk it. Uh, last week, we got a couple of critiques about we really didn't get to introduce ourselves and they didn't really feel like they can know us better. So right now we're going to take a few minutes to actually do that. And I'm going to go start by saying my name is Dreamcatcher the Prince. Uh, I was born in Boston. I do live in Orlando. So whoever's in Orlando, hit me up. Uh, I'm a big Boston fan. I am a student of music. So I go for school for recording arts and show production. So if anyone out there uh, needs anything with music or wants me more so to mix or anything like that, let me know. That's pretty much my, my, uh, what's that called? Forte. So, uh, Deuce Wayne. So, uh, for me, um, I'm Deuce Wayne. And, uh, a lot of people been asking me what, why do I call myself Deuce Wayne? Um, one is because I plan on being a thought and I want the host know my real name. And, uh, two is because, uh, Batman's one of my favorite characters. So, and you know, you know his alter ego is Bruce Wayne. And so, uh, I guess I'm going to say it. Fuck it. So I was in the military. Uh, yeah, thank you for your service. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Whatever the fuck. Because I never know what to say when y'all ask me that. Like, and we need to talk about that one day. Because they always asking us. Like, they always say, well, thank you for your service. And I, I got the fucking, like, I ate ass face. And I was like, like, I don't know what to fucking say. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what to say. Yeah, but I mean, we appreciate it. But it's awkward. Stop asking us that, please. Stop telling us that. Yeah, let's get that out the way. Um, so I was, I'm originally from Virginia. I was born in Virginia. I moved to Atlanta when I was an adolescent, um, just struggling. And um, that's why, um, for those who do know, when I did my Mother's Day post, I always say her. I said, my mom in the six raised me right because my mom raised me for all my life. You know what I'm saying? Still raised me because I'm still learning shit from her. And uh, I say the six because, you know, that's the original six, six, seven, eight. A town, but I say the six raising me because that's where I learned so much stuff about uh positivity, energy. Um, that's pretty much where I found myself. Well, start to find myself, you know. And um, I'm just these my homeboys, these my brothers. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. All right, man. My spiel is not as long as theirs, but uh, I'm in. I'm from the Philly area. Was born in the same area. Uh, but I am a Rams fan. As you can tell, sports is more my forte. They got the music and all that stuff covered. Okay. Uh, 25 years old. Um, I mean, ain't really much to me. I'm a simple man. Word up. And for those who don't know, so I feel like we're going to do the beginning segment because we have guests coming on. So we hope y'all get ready for that. Um, but we want to address y'all feedback. And so I got a bunch of feedback, and I'm going to just tell you guys, you know what I'm saying. So a few of the things. One was that... DC did a very good job with the intro. Thank you guys um, for that. You know what I'm saying? Um, they were saying that uh, Ant sounded like he was calling to the breakfast club. Oh, yeah. So, you know, but we fixed that, you guys. You'll you can tell. Difference. If you can't tell, he, we fixed that issue. Yeah. Um, one thing was that they, I guess, somebody, and we're not going to mention anyone's names, but they say we need somebody to be controversial. Um, and my piece on that is, is like, we're not doing this to be controversial. We're not doing this to be like the Joe Budden podcast or the breakfast club or drink champs. Like this is the life podcast. We're our own entity. We are our own men. We have three different opinions. Now I get it. Sometimes it might seem like we agree too much and that's boring for you. I understand that, but we're going to talk about sports. We're going to talk about politics. We're going to talk about motivational shit. You know what I'm saying? You're just going to talk about the shit we normally talk about. And if you fuck with it, cool. If you don't, I get that. But 
I feel like I would be fake if I was trying to be Stephen A. Smith or Charlemagne the guy. You feel me? Or Joe I'm gonna Bud. put my uh, piece in when you're done. Go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, I get that. You know what I mean? But I appreciate it wholeheartedly. Like, don't get me wrong, but that's just not me per se. I'm that. This is not an act for me. The only thing fake is my stage name, but it's real because I own it. So, hey. <laughs> shout out to the United States of America. But go ahead, bro. We we do appreciate the feedback. Um, on that topic right there uh we're not so much i mean if i disagree with somebody it's because i disagree it's not going to be because just to have a controversial like like uh he was saying but i mean i'm going to disagree because i want to not because we need somebody as the bad guy so to speak but okay all right and and they get like i said give it time because i'm not gonna say some shit i'm gonna say some shit tonight that's gonna piss some people off and that's okay i feel like that's i feel like all sides need to be heard. Every opinion needs to be represented. And there's a few of the feedbacks that we're going to address directly in this episode. Um, the last one was the whole female perspective. And don't worry, we got you on that. We got you on that. Trust me. Give us some time. We got y'all. So, All right. And tonight's episode is going to be a great episode. We're going to talk from movies to laws. And right now, we are waiting for our two guests to come in. We have amanda that we used to serve with as well to have that female's perspective especially when it comes to that new law that came in effect um and we also got towards the end deuce wayne's brother is an artist and he goes under the name carnage beats and we are gonna go interview him and he has a new project and some ideas that's coming out that i believe you guys will enjoy right so uh if if you remember from the first episode for those who listen which a whole bunch of you did like thank y'all for real um, the Amanda chick that I shouted out, and I can remember what the fuck her YouTube is. She's gonna be on, so <laughs> she can tell y'all the YouTube page. <laughs> yeah, you can get the I, the source directly from her. Yeah, directly from her. You know what I'm saying? So if she cussed Yo, me G. out, y'all don't take offense to it. You know, what I'm my bad for coughing a lot. There's some shit in my throat. Pause, and this shit just been there all day. So Damn, there's gonna be a lot of editing you gotta do. Yeah, nah, man, keep that in there. If you gonna keep the closet <laughs> shit with me, you gonna keep no. that. You gonna keep that lot shit in the throat shit. Pause. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. All right. Y'all was on my ass last week. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, so we get started with the playoffs? Yeah, we get started with playoffs. Yeah, it's going to tell sports back. So all the women who don't want to hear the sports part, you can skip through it. Um, I ain't gonna t- I don't know how long it's going to be because I got a lot of or, sports topics. But Or you can educate yourself and listen to it. It's up to yeah. you. Your choice. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're single, if you want to get a man, I'm pretty sure you can take some of our takes it and then. You can get you some dick. You know what I'm saying? Not saying dick is important. Not saying you need that. I'm not saying that you need a man. But, you know what I'm saying? This dick ain't free. That's all I got to say. All right? So He got a premium. Not yet. Not yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> it's coming. I'm telling you, if the podcast don't pop, the Snapchat premium is going up. I'm telling you right now. I'm selling dick. You know what I'm saying? The long way. <laughs> In Google Gangnam style. You know what I'm saying? Kingdom style. I just had a, I just had a nap, y'all. So I feel fucking amazing. Like I don't sleep that good. So if I, I'm a little silly tonight, you know what I'm saying. All right, that's what's going on. All right, so playoffs. What was the score? Uh, the score. That's a good question. Very good question. I think it was. Uh, I could just pull it up real quick. Give me a it's a uh, 108, yeah. 100 Golden State. Golden right. State. Yeah, that's support. correct. Mm-hmm. So we both know that was yesterday's game. So we all know the two brothers are going against each other. Word. And Seth, I thought that was dope. How um, my bad. I mean, to cut you off, DC. I thought I just want to say I'm doing the same shit Ant did last episode, but mm-hmm. fucking. Uh, but the thing is, he was cutting us off, talking some shit like, "Hey, you know, by the way." The, the grass is green and the sky is blue. People's like, why the fuck he keeps like going back to certain shit? But that's my boy. Sorry. So if you fuck with him, you fuck with me. Mm. One hundred. We're gang, the only gang, one shit. allowed to mess with him. Gang, gang, bitch. Yeah, you feel me? But I ain't no gang, so please don't come with me. No, yeah. I live, in a, I live in a gated community with Mexicans and Asians. Like, don't fuck with me, please. All right. So anyway, I just thought that was dope how the parents had like the jerseys, but it had like both teams on it. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was dope as fuck. Yeah, I thought that was dope. <clears throat> yeah, that was dope. Um. Yes, yeah, what you were saying, Steph and Seth. Go ahead. All right. It's awesome how both brothers are actually going against each other. Um, 
it makes that competitive that competitive drive even better because they want to prove, hey, I'm the better brother in my mind. So you can see them both falling out because last night of the game they both combined for fifty three points, which was amazing. And I do like how their parents actually did both the um both the jerseys. And yeah, that was dope. That, that was it was even dope. funnier when you see the video of the parents flipping coins to see who they are rooting for. Yeah. Was that their sister or something? Yeah. I think that was oh, yeah, their yeah. sister. Okay, that's what's what up. was also uh what was I about to say? Damn. Uh I got you, bro. I got you. Yeah. I was about to say I'll be the I'll no, be the, no, I'll be the No, it wasn't anything about that. It was about uh fuck was I? I don't even know what the fuck I was about to say. I had to share my head until the damn computer rang. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about was the fact that um, I I didn't get a chance to watch it. I was working on our website, um, coming soon, but uh, I was watching the ESPN app and I noticed that Portland was up for I was I would say a decent amount of the game. I'm not too sure. Like, don't kill me in the comments. They were up for like double digits. Right, fifteen right. at half. So I thought that was interesting. Um, but as I what I gathered from um while I was watching ESPN the next day was um. The fact that they was talking about the defense on Steph Curry, and I feel like that was the difference. Because I was I was thinking to myself when I seen the score, whatever it was at the time, I was like, "Damn, let me look at Steph's production." And I was like, "Oh, he's about to take over. He's about to take over." So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, and it was a matter of time. But to be for it to be that close, I know people think like eight points, like wow, that's not really close, close. But in the Western Conference Finals. And Portland, who hasn't been made it past the second round in I don't know how long. Years. At, you know what I'm saying? And to come off of a seven-game series and turn around and go to Golden State and to be up and to only lose by eight says a lot, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say is, did y'all see the video about uh, when Steph was shooting free throws at the end of the game and his brother goes, What's that, like 70 in a row? He said it's about to be 72. 72, yeah. That's fire, <laughs> I said, that's you know, fire. Oh, yeah, I tagged you in that, John. You know, Steph Curry has yet to miss one free throw inside the fourth quarter since like 2000. And overtime. Yeah, in overtime since yeah. like 2015, I think. Yeah. I think what happened was is with uh, KD joining Golden State, I think a lot of people started to lose appreciation for Steph. Like they forgot. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like this right now that KD's hurt, which I want to speak on in a little bit. But um, I feel like now that with him being hurt, I feel like now people are reminded about the Splash Brothers and Steph and his importance. Draymond like, I mean, Green. For, yeah. For those who knew, Draymond's trash. I don't care. But All right. You're lying to yourself. His what? defense. Oh, oh, my God. Let's get into it. We could talk about it. Put, Let's get into put it. Put Draymond on any other team. That's what? 30 teams in the NBA. Put Draymond on the other 29 teams. Are they championship caliber? Depends on the team. Not because of him. No, you're right. But I, he's a good player. He's an all-around good player. I see him, what? I see him more of a defensive player. I'm not saying right. he's, he's a scorer right. or anything like that, right. but he's the defensive player present. Where do you play? Need. All right, so, okay, okay, so let me ask y'all this. Where do you play Draymond all time? Not at, at his position or at what? Player, just do player. Because you know this position is basketball nowadays anyway. Where do you play some? Obviously, he's not top 50. He's not that. He's oh, so defense. what are we talking about, bro? Defense, he's top 50, maybe. <sighs> I don't defense, know, Defense, he's top. Yo, he, he won defensive player in a year, what, 2016, 2017, or 2015, 2016, one of those two. Because he was on the best team in the NBA. You know it's a popularity he, contest? He he has to play defense to be the defensive player of the year. Okay, okay. So he, he he's a, he's in the power forward position, right? Yeah. So think about all the players he had to go against. How many of them has he locked down? When they was winning against when they went against that time when they uh when they beat Cleveland when LeBron and Kyle, when like LeBron and uh was playing by himself, and Iguodala got the MVP. Why did Iguodala get the MVP? You're right. He locked down he was LeBron guarding the whole series. LeBron. Where was Draymond Green? He was fucking. Draymond. He was guarding yeah. someone else. He probably guarding some bum ass nigga from you know what I'm saying from Akron that they picked up off the streets because you know what I'm saying Love and fucking Kyrie was out. So he was guarding him, and then fucking Iggy was doing his thing on LeBron, which he did decent defense. You know what I'm saying? And he got the Finals MVP, which I feel like Steph should have got it. You know, but nah, Iggy all had LeBron locked down, and that's all that mattered in that series. Honestly, yeah, 
you could have shooters and stuff, but as long as you locked down LeBron that series, you were going to win that. Right. So if they, so if Cleveland were the one, then wasn't the old boy should have been the finals MVP? That one had the point guard? Who, Draymond? Who? The, for Cleveland. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, um, uh, because ain't him Milwaukee Della now? Yeah, Della Vidova. Della Vidova, yeah. So shouldn't him be the, should he be the finals MVP? No, Cleveland he's garbage. Okay. That's why he doesn't start now, because he's garbage. Okay. I'm just saying, like, I'm not, like I said, no disrespect to Draymond. I don't know that man personally. I just go off what I see. And, like, I know he's perfect for that situation. So, for him to call KD a bitch, it's like, bro, you just. That's his attitude. That's what he brings to the game. That's why the, everybody loves him on that team because he brings the heart. He's the attitude of the team. No one else has it. Yeah, they, I get it. They're all soft, like, Silicon Valley boys. You know what I'm saying? I get that. But, man, we're going to get into that when we talk about Zion, too. But what I want to what I want to speak on is the whole KD thing. So apparently, Durant is not close to returning to injury, according to reports. Yeah, he's out ESPN. for he's out for five, four and five. Right. So, and I'm not wishing this. Let me knock on wood. I just knocked on my head. But do y'all think it's maybe it's like an Achilles injury, and they just don't want to say anything because he's going to be free agent. He's going to leave, and he he wants to get the most money possible. Or or do they think that he can, or that they can beat the uh, Trailblazers without him, and are just resting him for the finals? Okay, I, so I, I, that's I, my t- I, I'm just I'm just throwing things out there. I'm not sure. I can agree with Ant. I, I agree so with. See, here's my thing. I I would go agree to that, but he's had these, uh, what they call it, groin stretches or little calf stretches before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they said that normally it'll take at least a week, right? So of course the series. They can handle him, whatever. Okay. But then they were saying that due to the severity of it, he can be out for four to six weeks. Well, let's, let's put it in perspective. Uh, Trailblazers only got Lillard and McCollum. Let's be real here. They right. don't have anybody else. I mean, their center was nice, but obviously he don't play no more. Right. Um, if they do go to the finals, the Bucks have Giannis. Uh, and Middleton. Got Middleton. He does his thing when he's Let's on, up. but if he's not on, then Let's pointless. Up. That's what I'm saying. All those players... Giannis is on every night. Those two players y'all named, they're on if they're on. They have to like if right. they play if they play the Raptors, mm-hmm. they got Leonard, they got Siakam, they got Lowry. So they have more I, I don't know. It's I feel it's like, gonna I depend feel like on Milwaukee has shooters now. So that's why I feel like Giannis, he can body he can dominate the middle, the inside. And I, I guess, you know, um I guess you would say Brook Lopez, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Since he was there. Is he even doing his thing tonight? You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, yeah, four four threes. Yeah, so I mean I guess them two take the inside and then he just surround himself with shooters. So I feel like what Milwaukee is doing is what Cleveland was in Miami was doing with LeBron. You know, well not necessarily Miami, but I feel like Cleveland. They're just like, Hey, you're the centerpiece, you're the guy, you're gonna give us what we need. Um, we're gonna surround you with shooters and give you like a couple of stout defenders and we're just gonna ride you all the way to the uh the promised land. So by the way, the Bucks are blowing them out right now, 64 39 at halftime. I still I, I think it I think it's gonna go seven. You think? I think it's gonna go seven. I don't know, man. If if the Bucks pull one out in Toronto, they won't go seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. I think the Warriors will win this one in four, though. I don't see Blazers yeah, winning one. Man. And I, I don't know. I hate, yeah. I hate to say it, but yeah, I hate to say it too. Shout out to Portland, man. Shout out to fucking Dame Dollar, man. Yeah, and CJ, CJ McCollum, bro. Dame time. You know what I mean? So, all right, what was next on uh, uh, with the playoffs? Anything? Zion. Oh, no. before we do that, uh, they announced the finalists for MVP. Did they? Yes, I didn't see that. It is uh, Paul George, what? James Harden. And the Greek freak. All right. Okay. Okay. We can <sighs> go ahead. You can go first. All right. All right, bro. Okay. So I know how. This is what I hate. I'm just going to tell the truth. Fuck it. You know what I hate? I hate how the NBA does this thing where it's like when you're great and you're putting them and you're boosting their ratings and. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They'll give you your accolades, and then they feel like you got too much. Like, I feel like Jordan should have got way more MVPs than he's sure. got. You know what I'm saying? At least six. You feel me? So, I feel like LeBron should have more. So, 
And I'm asking you guys, y'all don't think LeBron should have been in that list? No, no, sorry. I don't think I don't think you can miss as many games as he's missed and uh, should make the list. I mean, his numbers aren't even comparable to the three that are up there. So, I mean, okay. I know I know Harden takes a shit ton of shots. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I know he takes more shots than he should, but mm-hmm. LeBron has missed what half the season. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, he missed like what six. He missed months? a lot of time, bro. But you gotta think about it. So from like October till All Star game, All Star week, that's a chunk of the season, bro. That's like at least like. Almost that's like half the season. Games. Right. Well, no. So that's like what? Four, it was 82 40, games, about 40 some games. Yeah, it's like it's like almost 45. 45. Right, 45 yeah. So okay. Yeah. So. so he was, because I think he was hurt before he made the All Star team. Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he played for more than half the season. So anyone remember when the rookie of the, the, rookie of the year thing fiasco happened last year? Oh, Ben Simmons, John? Mm hmm. Yeah, but he didn't. Yeah, he didn't play. He was actually a sophomore. He didn't play in any game, so that means okay, you're okay. still a rookie. So what about jo- Joel Embiid? He should have won it. When's the last time Joel Embiid played a full season and he won Rookie of the Year? No, he he didn't. He didn't win. I still think Jason Tatum should have took that one. Malcolm, I mean, I thought, didn't Malcolm? Joel, no, Jason Tatum. Didn't Joel Jason Embiid Tatum should have took Rookie of the Year? No, nah, Malcolm Brogdon won it that year. Michael Brown, are you sure? Because yeah, because I was mad because Joel Embiid didn't win, and I was pissed off. Because he only, yeah, about but but then again, he only was like LeBron. He only played forty some games that okay, season. Okay, okay. So my whole point was, and this is not I'm not being LeBron James dick rider. You know, so <clears> my favorite, my favorite player is Russell Westbrook. One. No, like I'm not. That's a fact. <laughs> y'all can say whatever you want. Y'all can, y'all can kiss my black ass. Matter of fact, y'all can suck my dick from the back and the cadence. That's what y'all can do. Like I speak my mind. But anyway, so check this out. Right, check this out. <clears throat> So, they were what? Before he went out, they were what? Fourth in the league, right? He's considered, he's considered, yeah, he was part fourth. of the MVP conversation. So, just because he goes down, you think, honestly, if he was still playing, would they have missed the playoffs? Uh, right. No. It's hard to say with the team that he's built. Or maybe not. They might have been like eighth or something. Because he, he was still playing. He was still playing. Yeah, they would still playing when Lonzo by. went down. They would have maybe, like he said, they might have squeezed by. But uh, nah, okay, I think, I think they would have got anywhere from four to six, as far as seeking goes. Ooh, right? That's high. Yeah, good. So considering where they were the year before, what is the MVP to y'all? Um, Most valuable player. What does yeah, that mean to y'all? Best all around player for that season. Okay, so Paul George, I get it. I get it. You know what I'm saying, but. Come on, playoff P. I, and I know I know the playoffs don't count, but come on now. No, nah, I'm that sorry. Playoff P shit got to stop. He really I didn't really produce in playoffs. The Paul George thing. He's, he did his thing this right. year, but he right. had half, first half of the season. Who heard of him? Right. I and mean, I'm we not know saying, his name, but. I'm not saying Braun should have won. I said he should have been considered the fact of. And that, hey, look at the Lakers now, bro. Look at the Lakers now. Like, they fucking protesting and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they were complete mess. They are a complete mess. So, regardless of how you feel about the man, and if you you knew when he was on that court, he make a difference. And like I said, I feel like there's a fucking campaign going to try to get rid of him because they know his power, and they're trying to diminish him before he owns a basketball team. But that's that's we can go to next week or whenever. Uh, right. So so with the All Star thing, what makes you think that Joel Embiid shouldn't be on there as well? I never say he shouldn't be on there. No, I'm just asking. Like he's not on there. That's what I'm saying. What made them not put him on there? He was like, I think he was like third or fourth in scoring or something. Right. I get what you're saying. They they're keeping the same energy, but my thing is, it's like that's still whack, yo. It's whack because you can't control your injury. You can't. You're right. But you should also be able to play 60 out of the 82 games in order to be on that list, in my opinion. Okay. So like, and so that's why NFL is king. You know what I'm saying? It's because. If you look at the Eagles when they won the Super Bowl that season, and fuck the Eagles, but if you look True. what happened during that season, Carson Wentz went down. He still won the MVP. The NFL's fixed because they 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 knew his value to that team. They wouldn't be where they Without were him. at if it wasn't for him. I get it. In the NBA, is more than just the, it could like you don't have to really have a quarterback on the court because everybody plays posi- positionless basketball, so you can. 
it could take you need like at least two good players to be contender, a championship contender. But I'm saying he was by himself. You know, saying so he was teaching those guys how to be teammates. He was teaching them guys how to be winners, and they were winning. They, I mean, they lost to bullshit ass teams, but they were winning. They were the fourth seed in the West. He leaves, they're out of the playoffs. But guess what? Who gets blamed for that? LeBron. Right. So doesn't that make him the most valuable player? But we know that. We Wonder. know he's good. It's not a secret. This is. I'm not saying it should be about who's good and who's not because then you got to make that list like at least 10. You know what I'm saying? All I'm saying is if you look at who's valuable like me, Russell Westbrook is my favorite player. My favorite player on the planet. To me, he is fucking dope. I don't care. Nobody say it. Y'all gonna stop disrespecting my nigga. You too. Like, for real, for real. I see y'all out there. I see what y'all be saying. Yeah, y'all Utah, Utah Jazz fans. So if you're yeah. listening to this in Utah. Yeah, where y'all at? You can do, do y'all it back too. Yeah, for real. You know what I'm saying? But And it's crazy. And it's crazy because this is the only man really to average right. a triple-double three right. years straight. And not he's even not even in consideration. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying he should be like a top three finalist. You know what I'm saying? And I know, I guess it sounds like I'm choosing you know what i'm saying because these are my favorite players but it's like damn dog i know what i'm talking about too bro so like i mean that's why i can look at i can look at last year and say donovan mitchell should have got rookie of the year you know what i'm saying i can say that yeah. you know what i'm saying i can I, and like i said he's not one of my favorite players he's dope you know what I'm saying? he's ill i don't know what happened to him this year but you know that is what it is, it is what it is i could look at ben simmons and be like he is going to be great once he gets a jump shot you know he will be, like, but he will he develop one? That's another time we could talk about that. All this yeah. other extra sports stuff on another segment, but yeah, true, true. There's yeah. a lot we could go into with a lot of these. But yeah, players. that's just my whole take on the on the MVP thing, bro. Like, yeah, he just he could just been third or whatever. Like, they just x him out, and now they and then they trying to slander his name, but like he's old, he's aging, you know what I'm saying? So he can't get nobody. They're trying to convince other players not to go play with him. Like, what LeBron? It, yeah, bro. That I think it's a secret. Going, like, all right, so you know how when the whole Drake and Meek situation went on, and people were saying that Jay Z was behind it and all the higher ups because Drake was so good and he was actually going to make history. So mm -hmm. they need someone to come distract him. And once he, and once they seen that weakness, they started like you see him doing. That's when he put out views, and he didn't sound the same. And if you think about it, if you listen to Drake, those first three albums, right? Take, uh, thank me later. Take care. Nothing was the same. Listen to freestyles and stuff like that. All that stuff going on, right? Cool. All right. Listen to that. Keep that in your mind. Now, listen from Drake from Views on to Nap. Is that the same Drake, bro? Hell no. You went from in your feelings to uh, trapping. Not, not, re not really. I feel like where he was headed, where Drake was headed, was something unprecedented. And it scared a lot of people. And I think Hov had a part of it. Hov's my favorite rapper. And I think he looked at it like, damn, he's going to even top me. He's going to be considered the greatest of all time. But I to think Hov is the goat. This I think that's more. A bitch. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's more like human instincts about hey. It's kind of like what what. Everyone great, once they're once they're, how do you say it? Oh, once the people like... that's once the people that's supposed to replace them, uh -huh. because they're getting old, they uh -huh. that's that fear that they get. I think that's just human nature. Because look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady got rid of all these good ass quarterbacks, right? Because he feared, hey, I'm a someone's gonna do what I did to Drew Bledsoe, right? Then I'm gonna get hurt. Something's gonna happen. Someone's gonna take my place. Be better than I am. They're gonna forget. I think that is just human nature. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah, I so. get. I will, I will agree to that. When it comes to LeBron's situation, if there that was because that's different because you got people who are already come and gone i think it's like the gms like if you listen to like fs1 and espn they'd be like oh gms tell me that if he come here you know clutch sports gonna be running the team and i'm like what but these are the same people that said that they, they can choose one player to start a franchise with lebron that's what this was two years ago right yeah. two years ago he was dropping 50 in the finals right so now it's <clears> like <throat> oh if he if if la were to trade him we wouldn't want him because or we would sit back and go on vacation for two years or the way that his contract because also he's going to take over the, the franchise. Like, I feel like they do certain things to certain players that they try to diminish them because 
I feel like he has a greater purpose. And like, I know we're going to the rabbit hole, but like, look at Nipsey. I feel like even though that's an isolated incident, but I feel like he had a greater purpose. So when he got killed, you don't think there were people who was afraid of what he was going to be? It was like, yes. Because he was, he was rebuilding. He was rebuilding everything. He was he bringing changed. back to bringing back right. to his peoples. He was right. doing what he was supposed to do. Right. Right. So I look at LeBron as that for the NBA. I feel like you had Magic Johnson. So you had like Dr. J, right? Mm -hmm. He took the NBA to a level. You had Magic Johnson and, and um, Larry Bird. They took it to a level. Then MJ came in and changed the whole game. Now you got LeBron. He's changing the whole game. And then you got Zion now who's going to change the game. And then people are trying to shit on him now before the man's played one second in the NBA. Mm. All right. Now that we're talking to Zion, let's get to our next topic. And I like that right. segue, right? DW, but be baby. But before we do that, Let's take a quick break to listen to our sponsors real fast, and we'll be right back. All right, that's life. All right, welcome back to the Life Podcast. Before the break, we were talking Zion Williams. We had a great segue about him, so let's get deeper in there. Do you really awesome. think he's going to go first? I, no. I do, and he deserves it. <laughs> go ahead. After the, reaction, after the reaction that we saw, you can tell he's not really excited to go to Pelicans since the Pelicans won. The first uh, draft pick. Mm -hmm. The way how everyone around him, even rumors saying that because he's going to the Pelicans, won the first uh, the first pick, he might even go back to Duke. I mean, I can see if you do that, but I say, why would you do that, bro? Get that bag. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. do it now, because anything can happen. You know. He, he, we seen him with the Nike shoe fell apart and they sent him free shoes and shit. Like you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. Like I say that he's not getting paid to play. Why make the NCAA even bigger? You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's another deeper, darker rabbit hole, but still, why would you wanna do that? Just go play for New Orleans, play for seven years, and then after year in year five or six, request a trade. Yeah, they're not gonna take him though. That's the difference. Like you could say he could go first, but they're not going right. to. Like, I don't think so take, either. They'll take R.J. Barrett they're or not. John Morant or somebody like that. Right. They're yeah. not going to. I think I think he really is going to go to the Knicks. Yeah, I think, I think he'll be there. Because the Knicks I got third. I know you think he's going to go first, but I think he'll still be their third pick. No, I think he's going to go first because I think the Knicks are going to. Oh, well, yeah. Him. I mean, if that happens, yeah. But what are they going to give? That's the real question. So, so, so this is my theory. I have no evidence. I'm not Stephen A. Smith or Max Kellerman or Shannon Sharp or Skip Bayless. This is just what I'm going off of, okay? So we know sometimes sports they can are. be rigged, right? The New York Knicks, the NBA is, a be is better when teams like the bigger city teams are great. The Celtics, the Knicks, the Lakers. Um, shit, that's pretty much it, right? So when these teams that are historical, when they're good, or competitive, I feel like the league is better. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. even, I can say you can say the Bulls because of Jordan. I, I feel like he done that. So I feel like what's going to happen is is that they're going to give because they already know AD's leaving. He's going to leave, mm -hmm. right? So they don't want the pressure of getting Zion or whatever like that. And they know his reaction because David Griffin is smart and he's going to be like, hmm. Because he's very, very smart. He's a good GM. And I feel like, all right, I know you want me in New York. I want I want Knox. Give me Nick Lakina. Give me those pack. Give me some picks. You know what I'm saying? And we'll just go full re we'll rebuild, <clears throat> and we'll we'll just go back a couple of spots. Y'all can get Zion. Y'all can take all that, and we'll fall in the background, and we're gonna slowly rebuild. Well, yeah, I mean, because if uh, the Knicks do that, the Knicks if the Knicks don't do that, then they're just gonna stay where they're at as far as NBA goes. Because I mean, who are they gonna get if he's not there? But KD and Kyrie. 
KD and Kyrie is going. To we can we can say that, yeah. but if they don't, then they don't. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. Like, that's yeah. the rumors. They, but I'm just saying, if they don't, then yeah. what? You're still at your sw- point zero. Like, you haven't moved anywhere. So, right. Uh, right. I don't know. I think he'll still be there when their pick comes. But like you said, that's a possibility too. They could trade up. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, I don't know. Like, because if KD if KD really is hurt, the way how we suspect he is uh-huh. i really don't think he's gonna end up in the next you can go to philly because who, who's gonna take someone that just tore his achilles he's kevin he's, durant he, hey that's still one <laughs> that's still one injury that is a serious injury KD, that's hard bro. to come back okay that's kevin bro have you, have you you spoke before this right yeah okay so as you can tell he's high <laughs> Okay. Oh, He's I think says Kevin spoke Durant, about this. bro. This was 2019. I'm not, I'm not high, by the way. You sound high as fuck, my nigga. Listen. I'm half He's sleep. Kevin Durant, my G. He's that's one. Two. He's Kevin fucking Durant. Three. It's 2019. The medical advances that, like now, bro, you can recover back from so quick. Like imagine if, imagine if we were where we at medically when Kobe got hurt. He probably, he probably could have added a couple more years. You know what I'm saying to his career. Yeah. So, and he's in Silicon Valley. They're the leader in technology in the world. So you telling me right now they don't already know? Fuck yeah, they much, do. Like what's going on and trying to figure out? Yeah, bro. Oh, we can do this little surgery. We can snip <clears throat> this. We can do yeah. that. The only reason like, I say on, the only reason I say that because the Marcus cousin took how long to to recover? The Marcus cousin was on the Kings. Their, no. their medical staff, and he was in the were, Pelicans too. The medical staff came from a free clinic. When he exactly. when he tore his when he tore his Achilles, he was in the Pelicans. He was in the Pelicans. Yeah, New Orleans. Well, that's that's, that's true. realistic. Like he could be playing right now, but that's another big name that, like we talked about earlier, Steph Curry's time to shine is right now. While KD's down, if if uh, Boogie was playing right now, then Steph Steph's name not really heard of because well, you got fucking Demarcus Cousins down low, and I mean, true. But he wasn't that effective. When You're right. He, he seems so, he seems like he was softer yeah. because he got hurt. I think he looked like he was scared to play. Yeah. That's that's yeah. one that's that's one thing I'm trying to like get y'all to think like. But yeah, if he did ahead, if but... he did tell tear it, he's not gonna be the same. Okay. Okay. So think about this. Boogie Cousins is a big guy, mm-hmm. and we're human. We're on planet Earth, so the heavier people, our body has different effects on it. So, of course, if he gets hurt, his recovery time is going to take a while because his body's already got more stress because of muscle because he's already bigger. He he does more shit that's impactful. Kevin Durant is about 102 <sighs> pounds soaking that's wet. That's true. Majority, <laughs> that, majority of that if it's nappy ass head. You know what I'm saying? So, he can do that. He doesn't put that much strain on his body. His game is not high yeah. impact like a Boogie Cousins, right? He doesn't have to bang down low. His shot is overarching. They can't reach his shot. So his recovery time is nothing. He can probably get back to start doing basketball type techniques early. He could probably be playing right now, but like uh, uh, once again, the attention yeah. right now, Steph Curry, he's got to build his name back up and keep it up there. Because if not, then it's like, oh, Kevin, Dur- exactly. y'all have seen Kevin Durant and the Warriors? It's supposed to be Stephen Curry and the right. Warriors. It's not Kevin Durant or the Splash Brothers and the Warriors. Right. Mm-hmm. Who's to say he won't be just. Being like, I'm gonna wait and wait till the finals come exactly. and just smack that ass. Be like, oh, he comes back and drops forty at night, and then they go, oh, KD, and his ass can go straight to the Knicks. We did get way off the topic you, of Zion Williamson in the in the draft, but fuck it, that was a good I, conversation I that needs to be happening. I know. I, yeah, hey, we're right. just talking, man. We just shooting the shit. But yeah, but uh, back to Zion. So there's something that Ant wanted to bring up about Zion. What was that? That he say does it deserve to be number one pick? Yeah, he, I don't think he does. Honestly, John well, Moran is a all around much better player. I'm, no, I shouldn't say all around because Zion can score. But when you look at John Moran's game, depending on what your needs are at the first spot, go ahead and huff and puff. I hear you up there. <laughs> depending on who has takes the first spot, John Moran should be the first pick. If it's the Pelicans, I say they take John Moran. If it's if the Knicks trade up. Then the Knicks take him. I mean, that's just my take. I'll take the bad guy spot for so, this one right now because that's what's about to go down right here. Listen, I can be the bad <laughs> guy spot. I, they probably saying this nigga crazy, bro. Oh, the boy Deuce is tripping. Okay. 
John Morant is great. And I feel like his game translates to the NBA right now better than Zion's. But at the same time, on the flip side, I think not. Because think about this, right? Zion is more than just his court vision, his explosiveness, um, what else? his dominant play style. Um, he needs to work on his jump shot, but he's a big. So, okay. Um, there are comparisons to him being like a Charles Barkley. And Charles Barkley is a Hall of Famer. Yep. He wasn't just a great player. He's a Hall of Famer. So keep that in mind. So I feel like the thing was, had New York got the first round, the first pick of the first round, I think Zion, this whole trying to tear down Zion thing. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to make the case for him yeah, so he yeah, can yeah. drop down. That's my whole that's my whole thing because people like, oh, the NBA is, is leaning towards three. It's we're already in there. We're already in the era of the three. But but think about this. When Cleveland was going against Golden State, right? When everybody was healthy, Tristan Thompson was dominating that, that series was- low key. Why? Because he was rebounding, he was getting the putbacks in, those second chance points. And low key, when he was doing the fast breaks, he was kind of right up there. Then he started he dating Kardashians. LeBron was taking a yeah, that, true that, true that. You know what I'm saying? I'll take that <laughs> risk. But, you know what I'm saying? So, so at the same time, he, w- he was running the fast breaks. He was right there. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like Zion, he, to me, he's like a more, he's like, he's like Charles Barkley 2.0. You know what I'm saying? So he has that potential. And what he brings to the game. Like, we have not had this much hype around a player. Since, since LeBron. Like LeBron. Right. You know they're taking away from uh that taco dude? That dude is like seven seven. My man's wingspan is eight Bro, two. His his height when he just puts his hand up is like ten foot. Like my man's scoring without even jumping and there ain't no hype around his name. I'm telling you what I'm telling you I'm that's taking boy. him. That's yeah, boy from I'm UCF, telling you I'm right? taking him to ass boy. Yeah. But did y'all watch when they played Duke? Did y'all watch when they played Duke? Bro, if you kick if you flick his knee, that shit's gonna bend and tear his Achilles or something. I mean his uh ACL or some shit. Not, not even that. All right, so he was in foul. Okay, okay. So for those, we're talking about March Madness. So uh, UCL was playing against Duke, and Duke barely Twice. survived for quite as a kept. But you know what I'm saying? Yes. So the thing is, from what I've seen, is that he's obviously the biggest player on the court. I saw two problems. One, he stayed in foul trouble. That's why they kept sitting the most majority of the time. Two, and that he was grabbing the rebounds no, he like was, that, bro. He really wasn't. It was kind of... And he wasn't collapsing. He wasn't collapsing on Zion or the shooter to keep them from hitting threes. You know what I'm saying? Even though they, even though they wasn't making them like that. But I'm just saying, like you still supposed to close in on the. On it's kind of like he was a. Uh, it's kind of like he up. was like forced to play basketball because of his size, honestly. Like, and now he. Right. Yeah. But, All because like, you're tall he's don't mean he'll secure, you can play. It. He'll secure the bag right. real quick and then move on with his life. Yeah. 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 Get up. Hey, I'm oh, all shit. for it. Get your money, bro. Yep. Hope you get drafted the first ten picks. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Get yourself some sponsors. You'll yeah, be all right. Get your money. Change your life. Change your family life. Like, I'm all for that. But I'm just going off what I saw. Because I'd never yep. heard about him until that game. And there was, there was like, talk with this, talk with that. I'm like, damn, I love talking. And I'm not going to lie to you. I never heard so, of John Morant until they he, until the March Madness. I won't lie to you. But right. but then I looked That's at him, went back and looked at, like, his stats for the year. And he was averaging, averaging what, double-digit uh, double digit assists. And he was averaging a double-double, mm-hmm. but with assists. Which is, but and then the thing is, that's another thing too about Zion. We heard about we heard about Zion before he went to Duke. Yeah, because he was. I a, know uh, I heard about. Him. I know I heard about. Him. I was watching highlights of Zion before he went to. Duke. But it's because of where he went to high school. He went to so, high school at a bigger high school. Yeah. So I mean, he was a high school phenom. But there's certain players like all right, so like Kyrie, KD, all those guys. Their name was ringing bells up there at the record. You know what I'm saying? So it's just certain players that like, just like transformative. And they yeah. transcend the game. And I feel like Zion is that. And the NBA needs that if they want to stay competitive with the NFL. LeBron is aging. Someone got to replace him. You know him. what I'm saying? K- right. We can't. It's not going to be KD and Steph. Come on. They're great players. But there's, their face in the NBA is not going to be Kevin Durant. It won't be Kevin Durant. Steph, I'm sorry. Both. Kevin Durant is, a, is an unstoppable player. He can be the best player in the game. But he will not be the face. I'm telling you. Once LeBron's gone. When, LeBron, yeah, when LeBron will. retires. It will be Zion, bro. If if Ben Simmons gets a jump shot, it'll be Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is a LeBron. Right, right, He's right, a LeBron right, mini. Right, right. I agree. I agree. I, I know agree. they were trying to put Giannis as the face, but they were like, 
oh, I forgot about. Yeah, they were trying to, but the Giannis was like, they won't let me do it because I'm not really American. Fuck that. They don't care. How many times they put Dirk out there? When Dirk <laughs> fucking smacked the heat, what did they do? Dirk was on every commercial, bro, hitting that fucking fadeaway jumper. Shout hey, out to Dirk. That's what he said, though. He said they won't let me be the face because I'm not from Speaking here. Speaking of Dirk, yo, that man said he gained 15 pounds since being retired. He said all he eats is ice cream every day. Yep. <laughs> he deserve it. That man deserve it, boy. He gave Dallas a ring, boy. What's this other song we got? Shout out to Dirk. That was all the sports songs or what? Uh, Yeah, that was it. That's pretty much it. All right, let's take a quick break real fast. So that way we get everyone's brains back in where it's supposed to be for the next set of topics. All right. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Life Podcast. Today we have two guests on the line with us. Uh, first one is going to be Amanda, who actually has uh, inspirational videos online on YouTube. Uh, you can look at her IG page on Awkward Potato. 52. 52? 52. Yeah, Awkward Potato. 52. There you go. And then we also have Carnage Beats, who is our musical guest tonight. Um, for our first subject, Deuce Wayne. Okay, cool. So, um, there's a lot of stuff going on about abortions now, and uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at this article from CNN and Melissa Alyssa Milano. I don't know what was that show. She's on Charmed, right? Yes. Yeah. So she's on Charmed, and she's been saying some wild shit in the past. But so she's proposing a strike because she feels like there is a war on women. And she feel like the GOP has a vendetta against women. And so I would like you guys take, especially Amanda's, I want to know your take on the abortion laws being passed. And do you feel like women are being treated equal? And your thoughts on the feminist movement. And also, what I want everyone else to talk about is why are why have we become territorial over our political stances? Like it's kind of like it seemed like it was like gangs, like. You know what I'm saying? Democrat, Republican, throw your set up and shit. Like, I just want to know. So, if you want to go into it about that. Um, so, the, the, the abortion thing, I, I don't think that should be, like, a government issue, just personally. Yeah. The feminist movement, I'm not, you guys know me. I'm not really, like... Yeah into the whole feminist thing if you want things to be equal then you need to do things equally and i feel like a lot of times they're not but like my i was thinking about today because i was thinking about some stuff i wanted to say on on here uh but like with the whole abortion thing like i think so i took a couple notes there's like nine states now that uh have officially put bans on abortion so like three Four states like Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, and Ohio have the heartbeat bill. So you can't get an abortion after six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, Utah and Arizona limited the procedure to the middle of the second trimester. But like I said, I don't understand why the government's getting involved in this. If we're going to do things equally, like if you're going to put a ban on abortions, then you need to start pushing maybe vasectomies. Because it takes two people to get pregnant. Right. Females are Touch. not asexual. They can't just be like, well, today I feel like having a baby. Right. So, okay, I'm pregnant. Well, they might have you know to be I mean? asexual if they're going on strike. Yeah. But they the, the sex strike thing, I don't get it. Because it's not, it's not hurting anybody. Literally. Right. Nobody. Right. Because half the people that are like, I'm going on a sex strike, nobody, you know, they, they kind of don't want to have sex with those people. Yeah. So. Yeah. And by the way, ladies, Pornhub is free, so you're not hurting me. <laughs> yeah, Pornhub, and then there's like five thousand dollars sex robots, or like hey, cheaper hey. sex robots. There's hookers, prostitutes, all these things that guys can go do, no, or they can just cheat like on you with somebody who actually wants to have sex. So like, they're gonna get it one way or another, pretty much. We saying exactly. You're not That's really fact, taking but. the option away, but I don't think that the government should have a like a say in the abortion thing. Really? Mm -hmm. well, so, 
uh, another, my question, another question I have for you is, um, do you feel like the government has a vendetta against women? Because I feel like, honestly, truthfully, from a man's perspective, and I know it's a man's perspective, I get it, y'all. But I feel like you guys are in the driver's seat as far as pushing the culture for forward and driving a lot of issues. You know what I'm saying? With the Me Too movement, I feel like a lot of things are being led by women. So I I look at this these incidents as big as they are, and I take them very seriously. Like like I said last week, we should not tell a, how a woman what to do with her body. But where is this war that's on women? I don't you know see a war on women. I think it's just like people nowadays with the whole feminist movement, some of the feminist movement is confused on what feminism is. And so this ban on abortions, Facts. I get that people are trying to like, like help an unborn child, but you're not really helping the unborn child, the family or the government, because maybe that unborn child is going to be given birth and given away and they're going right, to go into right. the system. So then that puts more strain on the government, might raise taxes, might do something like that. That kid might never get adopted and then it'll just be a vicious cycle for that kid. And then you're also forcing, like, maybe a 16-year-old to have a baby that they shouldn't be having. They shouldn't be having exactly. because they're not financially set to have it. There's, right. like, a lot of different things you could put into it. Right. And to provide context to the listeners, Amanda's conservative. So for her to speak on this, and that's another part of me that kind of annoys me. And like I said, I'm independent, but I don't, like, I don't throw up my set. Like, I'm independent. Like, if you hear... What she's saying and you didn't know anything about her, those are somewhat liberal views, you know what I'm saying? So but she's conservative. So my whole thing is, is like, why do we feel so strongly? And uh, the rest of you guys can kind of chime in on this. Why is it that people, because I know I don't, why do we feel so strongly about one side or the other? You know what I'm saying? Because I got some facts about Trump that people are going to be surprised. The people are going to be surprised and I'm independent, but these are all facts. They cannot be disputed. And like I said, I, I'm not a Trump supporter, whatever. Uh, I don't know who I'm going to vote for. Like I said, I'll probably wait to the primaries. But these are facts. But if you listen to one side, it's one way. If you listen to another side, it's another way. So uh, I want to get you guys' opinions on it while I pull this up, these facts up real quick. So you want my opinion on which part? Anything, bro. Go for anything? it. All right. I was talking to my girlfriend about this because before I do anything, I wanted a woman's perspective. I was just going to say I something about the, oh, go ahead. all you that go abortion first. stuff is should be on a woman. But I think depends if y'all in a relationship and y'all have a baby, I think you as a couple should talk about that. Not, hey, I'm just going to get it and not have him have his his say or his opinions about it. At the end of the day, it's all about women. If they want to do it, they can just. At least let me know, hey, this is my decision. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say nothing. Hey, it's your body. You wanna do what you want. At least give me a chance to prove that I could be a good dad. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I have friends that their their exes went off and had an abortion behind his back and he's like, Bro, you know how long I wanted a kid? Uh -huh. Like, come on. At least have that conversation with the with the father of the child before uh -huh. you get to the doctors if uh -huh. he wants to if he wants to hold your hand go ahead go do it if he actually wants to be in that child's life and be like look let me prove that i can be a good dad about it let's just sit down and talk about it that's all i ask just talk but at the end of the day you gotta remember it's a woman's body it's her decision you can't you shouldn't you shouldn't tell her hey you're not gonna have this baby or you're gonna have this baby you know what i'm saying especially on certain circumstances like, I think it's so stupid that if you've been raped or molested or anything like that, that you're not allowed to get you rid of it. My, my thought. You know what I'm saying? Dang I think that is the dumbest thing. If yeah, you a lot really, of the if, states, they like, like, why? put that exception into the bill, like, especially Alabama. No offense to anybody yeah. that lives in Alabama, is from Alabama, no, or no. nothing all, like that. All the, all the offense to Alabama. That's, like, that's a shout out to you, by the way. Because that's your fucking territory. Like, come on. Not saying it only happens in Alabama, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah of course, Georgia's on that bullshit. We know. My thing yeah. about the whole like it's it's a women it's a woman's decision, it's a woman's body, and all that is like, yeah, it is our body, our decision. But at the same time, 
the man should have a right to it. I feel like the way it should have went is if you want an abortion and, like, your boyfriend or your husband is like, no, I don't want you to get the abortion, that's when the court system maybe should get involved to look at both sides of it, to be like, what's your income? What's your family status? Like, what's your job? Like, where are you living? What's your plan? And then the and then a court system can be like, yeah, maybe it's not such a good idea for you guys to have a kid right now. It's kind of like when you do child custody. The court system comes mm-hmm. in, looks at both parents. It would be the same factor mm-hmm. for, like, an abortion case, maybe. I don't know. Right. I mean, I, I agree with that as well. Like, I feel like, especially when it comes out of who, who's this speaking? Who's this? Who's this speaking? Uh, this is Carnage. You okay. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. But I mean, um, as far as the whole abortion thing go, I do agree with what she said. As far as like, you know, if it is a kind of situation to where like, okay, hey, like, let's say that one of the parties wants to go through with it, but the other party is like, well, maybe we should keep it. I feel like, yeah, that's probably when you know, yeah, okay, that's when the court, whoever it is, could come into it and be like, okay, all right, let's look at, you know, like what she said, let's look at like the income and everything. But I feel like. This is like a slap in the face to like a lot of the people that's kind of like, you know, like, a, you know, like a dream catch, you know, like, you know, he, he said like, you know, people have been raped and stuff like that, molested. And then, you know, it's not fair to say that, okay, you know, that's not something they chose to do. Like, that's not something that they, they didn't choose. That. And now they have to kind of like keep that. And that's going to, you know, I, I, yeah, a kid is a, is a blessing at the same time. Like in certain situations, they always going to be, like, when they look at that, that, that kid, they always going to see that. You know, and I don't feel like that's fair to the female to have to be able to go through her whole life looking at that kid and, and kind of having some resentment. Not saying that she hates the kid, but just looking at that kid and knowing what you know that the situation where that where that kid came from. I, I feel like that's I don't know. I feel like it's kind of heartless because I, I've seen people that, that I've, I've seen people that, that had uh, situations not so much you know being like you know they raped or something like that, but they might not have been ready for it. And then, you know, people always try to use the argument like, oh, well, you know, if you weren't ready for the kid, then you should have like you know been safe sex and all that type of. Shit. Like, okay, yeah, that's true, but at the same time, mistakes happen, and I feel like that's not fair because a lot of people don't have supportive homes where they can just, you know, say, "Hey, mom, dad, hey, I'm pregnant. We about to have a kid. They're like 16, but that, you know, like it can't happen. You know, right. I feel like that's not that's not fair to those people to have to say, okay, hey, we got to keep this shit, or you know, they talk about right. facing whatever, like, facing life or whatever, mm-hmm. murder or something like that. The whole yeah, Texas. That shit, that shit is kind of, that shit, it just fucked me up. Cause I'm like, damn, I have to put myself in this situation. Cause it's like, you know, I ain't ready for no kid. And God forbid something happened to me like that. It's like, damn, then, you know, I'm like, you kind of got to, you're forced to kind of have to, to live with that. You know, it's like, they don't really think about it. They only put themselves in, uh, you know, in other people's shoes when they, when they think of things like this, you know, and it's kind of, right. it, it hurts my soul. Cause I know it's so many like young females or just females out there in general that, that go through this on a day to day basis. It's like, damn, you don't think that. Like, that's, there's somebody out there that's going to have to, like, keep Warren. that just because they're afraid of, like, the consequences. When it's not even like they're doing it as a, hey, I'm going to just do this to ruin, like, you know, kill a fucking kid. Like, no, like, no, I don't think anybody thinks, like, oh, let me just get a fucking abortion just to be a fucking asshole and kill, like, an innocent kid. Like, no, right. like, right. people right. do that because, you right. know, situations, like, shit happens, man. Like, situations happen. And, and I don't, and I don't, I don't, I don't and I, not to cut you off, bro, I don't think that the politicians are going into this thinking that that's what they're doing. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to, it's kind of like good intentions, bad decisions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. But, I also but think Ant had this take, we, we was talking about it. My bad, Amanda, you can go ahead. But I was just saying by Ant, he had a take um earlier that I feel like he should get in on it because I, I felt like it's, it's dope. And I feel like he got bashed a little bit last week. So I feel like his take on this is pretty dope. And I feel like he should speak on it a little bit. We can't hear nothing you're saying. Yeah. This is hilarious. This man, this man, hey, for those who don't know, this man is full on talking. Mm-hmm. We can't hear shit. It's like a mind. He was like so confident when you like let him for have real. it. He you saw his talking, face. And it was like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the man got his, he got his Italian stallion bag, boy. But go ahead, Amanda, while he's trying to fix this shit. Um, I was uh, I was gonna say like I agree with what you're saying like like they're trying to do the right thing towards the unborn baby and towards women and all that in general but I also think it's like right now right now what you good I think right now it's also about votes if you think about it 
like how all this is coming out, they're trying to persuade people to like vote for them in this upcoming election. Why did he leave? <laughs> no. Hey, you can hear me now. You can hear you now. Yeah, DC. <laughs> Hey, keep this shit G. I swear to God, keep this shit is gold, bro. <laughs> I you got this. I'm not like editing none thing, of this out, And then bro. you just this left the much. chat, and then oh, came back. Oh out. my god. Oh man, I fucking love y'all, bro. This shit is fucking gold. Oh my god, and you didn't stop. Bro, you were bro, so happy bro, it. when it was your turn to talk. <laughs> he was happy as fuck. All so you see is your mouth moving. Mad shit with the microphone off. Like oh, getting pissed. Like, yeah. That man was happy as fuck, bro. <laughs> but I knew what he was saying because he told me earlier. That shit was funny. But go ahead, bro. <laughs> I think I think he can turn it down. All right. Um, <clears throat> what I was gonna say was um, like I'm against it and all, but I mean like after the second or third one, that's where somebody mm-hmm. has to step in and say something like, um, I think I like it's a female's decision. But after like the second or third one, it should come in to like, okay, was this person like, um, was she raped or what? Did something happen that shouldn't have happened? That's when I think you should step. Someone should step in after like, like I said, the second or third one. That's just my yeah. take on it. But I am a Say, like the second or third abortion that they, like that person had. Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, like, oh yeah. Like the first one, okay, cool, I understand. But now you're going two, three times. Like obviously. You're just doing having unprotected mm-hmm. sex because you like it because it's fun. Yeah, you know that you know what the outcome may be. So I mean, yeah, and realistically, like even even if you get raped, like if you get raped the first time, you can probably prevent it happening again. You know what I mean? Maybe twice, but the third time, it's kind of like okay, now like you're seeing the pattern. You know, but go ahead, man. I feel like more. I saw something about this today actually while I was researching it. There needs to be more education on like <sighs> like birth control and like safe sex and all that like in school in your health class you go over it but it's such a people act like it's such a weird unnatural thing to talk about and it's not and like with the way things like things are getting way more progressive with the way like 14 year olds look like they're 25 so like obviously they're gonna be having active sex lives and like parents need to get over it because well they didn't have a child just by thinking of them like, they had to have mm-hmm. sex to have right, them. Right. So they need right, to get over right. it, and they actually need to educate their children properly to be like, hey, look, if you're a girl, once you hit, like, 14 or 15, usually that's when your womanhood starts happening, which is a great time to be like, hey, maybe we should put you on a birth control, just in case. Not right, saying you're right. having sex, but it's, it's, a, it's a protective thing for you, her, and maybe the guy she ends up having sex with, you know, whatever. Right. And same thing with with guys. Like, I feel like there's that movie stigma where it's like, oh, I'm gonna go have a man talk with my son, and it's like, yeah, get her good. But it's also should be like, hey, here's a condom. This thing works. You should use it. Right. I'm gonna do. Go ahead, I'm gonna do the see. whole love love do casa thing. I'm gonna give a whole box because I have a stepson. I'm gonna have a whole box full of them for him, and I'm gonna make him. Do the banana. So I'm that way, one. at least he's educated. Yeah. I'm going to do what my mom did to us. Like, my mom, because I think is when my mom talk about sex, it like, it's like repulsive. Like, not saying she's unattractive or whatever. Not saying she's attractive because I'm not from Alabama <laughs> or, or West Virginia. But when she sat down and talked to us about sex, I was so disgusted by the act <laughs> of it. I was like, I didn't want to do it. Now, caveat. I've been fucking like a few years before, but she didn't know that. But at that point, I think when she, after she told us, I didn't have, I didn't fuck for like three months. Yeah, that's all he does. <clears throat> no, I, I've been, my dry streak has been long. <laughs> like for real, for real. Like, it's, it's like scare streak. But anyway, you know, so yeah, back to this. So, um, so about, I want to talk about political territory, yeah, territorial or whatever. You being more like, my side is right, your side is wrong, woo, woo, woo. and I think it's important, and I'm glad that uh, we got Amanda doing here because she is conservative, but like I said, her stance on abortion is not so conservative, and one thing I want to say now, I feel like with the times are changing, so it's not really, 
the old the age old of like liberalism, conservatism is not the same, in my opinion, for what I've noticed. And I feel like a lot of times that our generation is going to be the ones where we get to the point once all the old heads get out of power. I feel like once we get to the point where we're in positions of power, you will see a lot of these blended type of morals and ideals. And you'll realize that what America was in the beginning, like we're not so much different at all. But um, <clears throat> this was one of my topics I want to bring up. We ain't really got to talk on it. Um, like I said, I'm independent. And like I said, like I said last week, Trump is a fucking beast. But um, I'm going to start off by saying this. So I feel like as a black man, I feel like in America, there's a lot of self-hate. And it's not the self-hate that you would think I'm talking about. And next week, I will touch on this. Because this is an emotional topic for me. So once I get in my thoughts, I will speak on the next week. But um, I was talking to <clears throat> someone earlier and I was like, I feel like we look at Obama differently, blacks, and be like, oh, he didn't do anything because he didn't cut us a check. And he did a lot of things for us that we would not probably won't know until years from now. And so what that's to do with Trump, because I know Trump talks shit about Obama, but that's what he's supposed to do. That was... They clowned his ass, and that's the reason why he he ran for president and won. Like literally, they clowned him at that uh that journalism shit, and then he was like, "Okay, you don't think I'd be president? Okay, watch this." But I want to go over some things that he made promises over in his campaign, and actually follow through with, right? <clears throat> so, so we won't get like I know we want to talk about fucking collusion with Russia. I don't fucking know. Like I said, ask WikiLeaks. I don't fucking know. And to be honest, I don't care. Like I said, if Russia want to try it, let's go. I'll strap my boots up right now. We can get I'm, to it. I think I'm we pretty can big, it. so I'll get it's out gonna of gonna be real. Like Creed all over again. No, it's gonna get. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be real. Like I ain't gonna say we just gonna dominate them, but well, yeah, we, but we are gonna win. Let's just say I'm saying that we are gonna win. But anyway, so he spoke about tra- uh, tax cuts, right? <clears throat> this is Donald Trump, President Trump, right? So he has lowered it, right? So he brought the corporation tax down from 35 to 15 percent, and then. He had to make a compromise, so now it's 21%. So he was right about that, okay? The Paris climate deal, right? He said it's considered a hoax. Now, everyone thinks that climate change isn't real. I think it's real. The, the earth is literally, like, heating up. It's like, it's kind of like, it's in menopause mode. Yo, I'm not going to lie. And I thought you was about to say the earth is flat, and then I was going to hang up and just go to bed. <laughs> Real shit, I thought well, you were going to say that. you did, earth. I wouldn't notice. I, I thought you were going to say it's flat. I, I mean, thought, you already hung I mean, up. You couldn't mute your mic. Yeah, you're okay, one, was, so yo, you're when I started it. speaking, I was in my bag. Yo, I was getting it over here. And this John, this well, John we was saw your face. and everything. I was like, fuck. This shit ain't. Yo, it's so funny. Yo, he had the light off. He had the ambiance right. So I was like, yeah. I was uh, like, yeah. So I ain't going to it. This man was like, uh, I know you can't see my face, but he was just like. Uh, 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 uh. And I, so the Carnage was laughing, bro. But he, he muted his shit. So I, I'm looking at him laughing. <laughs> I had to lean back and I laughed so hard. I hope DC, you gotta keep that shit in there. I will, I will. But um, anyway, so pretty much uh, after three months of pretty much shitting on it, um, he finally was like, "Hey, I get it. I don't believe it's true, but I understand it." Um, he promised that he would put someone in the Supreme Court. He's done that with Kavanaugh. Um, he promised uh, bombing the Islamic State. Back in November 2015, he dropped the biggest non-nuclear bomb in the U.S. arsenal on their stronghold in Afghanistan. These are facts, okay? <clears throat> and this is not from an American news company, right? I'm not going to say where it's from. This is from a country that has nothing to do with America, and these are facts, right? Whoa, yeah, we won't get right. into those today, but... Not <laughs> mine. Hey, listen, not Deuce Wayne's BBC. <laughs> this is not my news company, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? Porn Under channel coming soon. Porn say what's up? like that. Listen, Pornhub, look, for real, Pornhub is giving the bag. Pornhub, holler at your boy. I need a free account. But anyway. Stop shouting people out, bro. I'm trying to get some money here. We, can, we need ads. Anyway, so the only thing that you can say was like, kind of like, uh, was like, he said he's going to bring the troops home. Um, in September of 2017, he deployed 3,000 additional troops to Afghanistan. In 2018, um, they planned on December, they was planning on sending like 14,000, but then I'm sending 7,000. But he did withdrew, he did pull 7,000 troops back out. So if you think about it right now, it's May. If he sent them in December and now in May, it doesn't say when he pulled them out, but he, he kind of made his promise on that. 
the trade deals, I know the one about China and the tariffs are like a big deal nowadays. You know what I'm saying? He kept his promise on that. He talked about, um, he said NAFTA was a disaster. And he said that the uh, TPP is going to be worse. He also pledged to correct the trade deficit with China. This is before he was elected. Before he's elected. And as we know what he's doing right now, he's in his back. So, and like I said, don't try to make it seem like I'm sitting here being pro-right, whatever like that. I'm neutral. I'm just trying to speak the facts. So what I'm trying to do is get you guys to see that a lot of these news cycles and shit, they have to, they have to make money. So my thing is when people ask me like, oh, who are you going to vote for? I said, I'm going to vote for the person with mo majority of the interests align with mine. So, and the thing is like, at the end of the day, you don't have to like him, but he is our fucking president, bro. He is our president. So that's like, that's like your parents. And let's say you got your, your dad is like a drunk. And he, uh, he, he has no filter, right? And, but he's the guy. He's the face of the family. So if you go out somewhere and other people are attacking him, you're going to just let him get attacked by him? You, we're all one, bro. Like, we got to stop this shit. And I'm not, and you know what I'm saying? Maybe you can say I'm biased because I was in the military and shit like that. But I don't give a fuck. If this was Hillary, I'm going to be like, listen, we got to come together, bro. We got to stop this bullshit because if not, that's how shit like that's how countries like Russia can come infiltrate Facebook and shit. This is how China can come in and do what the fuck they want. This is how we can have problems at the border. This is how we can have foreign enemies come in and fuck us up. You know what I'm saying? Shit like Red Dawn can happen. So we can keep with this bullshit and we can keep with this whole fall into this whole divide and conquer bullshit and be territorial and repping our sets, or we can do a little research and look at the facts. You know what I'm saying? And there's plenty of stuff that he's been wrong on. But I feel like, you know what I'm saying, these things, you know what I'm saying, like, I feel like people should know about it. And also, this last little tidbit, he talked about repealing Obamacare. So for those who don't know, um, he, they haven't repealed it yet. They're working on it. But he did remove the uh, whole, how uh, the little tax fee. So if you didn't have it, your health care, whatever, that's the one major thing. I know it for my community. That was a big issue with Obamacare is because if you didn't get it, Every year you would get levy the fee, you know, during tax time. So he removed that. Trump did. Donald Trump, President Donald Trump did that. So I understand, like, like I said, I don't know if the man's racist. I don't know him personally. I just go off what I see and I'm going off the facts. And these are right here. And that's what I'm seeing. I just wanted to let y'all know to educate yourselves you, before you go on Facebook and you say stupid shit or you share stupid shit. And then you try to stir up shit. And then when someone comes at you with facts and you just sit back and you want to attack someone personally, like, let's stop I love that people shit, that man. share CNN like, shit. That's my favorite. Bro. I love CNN's dick. And don't get me wrong. I watch CNN because sometimes they have a lot of my uh, political pundits on there. I like, I like quite a few of them, but I, I like, I watch Fox news too, because you have to, you need that. You need that yin and yang. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you need the fake the shit with the real so. shit. No, oh. man. It's like now nah, we're not gonna say CNN nah, is fake. Don't, don't, do that. don't be dishonest. That. They they are biased, but I look at them as like the yin to Fox News Yang. You need those. Yeah, you know I said, what I'm saying. Yeah, the bullshit to the real shit. Same thing, yin yang. You know. I mean, not everybody on Who's CNN though is fake because there's right. like two You're newscasters right. on there that actually like they will right. tell right. the truth no matter what, even if it's on CNN. That's why CNN is still pretty credible because they have a few. Right. People that have pieces where they're like, I'm going to give you the no bullshit of this, not what usually is produced by that show. And Fox News is more than just Sean Hannity. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's more to Fox News than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I implore people to listen to the opposition because you you might hear what you're saying, but in a whole different version. You know what I'm saying? Cause we all want the same thing. We all want this country to be better. We just have different stances on it. But from... The person who's kind of like in the middle and can see everything, I'm looking at like, damn, you really saying the same thing just in different ways. Yeah, I think some people like with the whole like standing your ground on your political stance and coming after people for having a different one. I think that some people are just too afraid to stand in the middle and look in both lanes because they're worried that right. the people that's in their lane are going to come at them and then, you know, create some shit that they don't want. I think that's why most people, like, once you, like, if you tell a liberal, like, oh, you're a snowflake, then they start saying, like, oh, well, Trump's a Cheeto, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, your mom yeah, probably yeah, yeah, yeah. is incest, 
Like, he's probably your cousin or whatever. And, and it's like, what does that have to do with anything? Obviously, my mom's not my cousin, but, like... It gets real childish. What does that have to fucking do with the fact that someone just called you a snowflake? Right. I ain't gonna lie. But, I ain't so, gonna lie. It just kind of sounded like a little bit Uncle Ruckus for a second. I did? Yeah, a little bit. Explain. Elaborate, man. Elaborate? All right. Go ahead. Elaborate. I'm open to it. All right. <clears throat> Could you spitting out all these facts, right, about mm-hmm. what he did? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, look at the other things that he's been doing, too. Absolutely. The whole white supremacy stuff is coming out. The real the real face of America is actually coming out. If you really mm-hmm. think about it, everyone's getting more comfortable with seg- with having that mentality of segregation, having a mentality mm-hmm. of, oh, I'm better than this person. I understand it's more it, you're trying to go for political views mm-hmm. and the facts that he did. You can't deny facts. Numbers are numbers. You can you can never deny that, but the fact that the country kind of in a lot of people's minds went backwards once he came in because he encourages those behaviors of back in the sixties where you make fun of people and kick them out. Look at all the rallies that he had. He encouraged people to kick them out yeah. because of their views. Oh man! Okay. How did his presidency make people segregate? I- I thought it had more to do with the cops than most shit. That I mean, I'm just saying, cops caused most of that. I mean, that too. It's all part of it. So I just want to. Yeah, you don't see Trump saying up there saying whites are better than blacks or some shit. I want to. Like, yeah, the whole wall thing. I get that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just want to respond to I'll DC directly. You know, what I'm saying right, my brother. Um, damn, I didn't know I sounded like that. Uh, because anyone who knows me, like they know, like, and you can ask Carnage, like, <clears throat> you know, what I'm saying, like, when I when I looked at shit like Charlottesville, and I looked at you know, hearing those comments and, uh, you know, and seeing how certain things have come out, I'll be the first one to blast fuck Donald Trump on the way to the motor pool. But then I had to stop and think and be like, all right, damn. Because when I think about it, the same shit was going on with Obama. And the thing is, it was black people saying it. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to down black. I love black people. Like my mom was black. My father's black. My brothers, my sisters are black. My cousins, my aunts, uncles. I love them all. And I never in my life Stop fighting for our plight. I know what we go through. But the thing is, is like, we do this bullshit where it's like, how could, and I'm talking about this as a country, we do this bullshit that it's like, if I don't like you, I'm not susceptible to look for the good you do. Right? Now, I understand, like, if I raped you and then I just took care of you and gave you a million dollars after that, I can understand why you'd be like, fuck you, or you would like burn that money. But if, I, let's just say I just said, oh, let's just say you was a woman. And I was like, oh, you a bitch. And you don't like being called a bitch, right? Or, or even this, I'll use this because this is a popular thing. If you're, if a white guy calls me nigga and I don't want him to say it and I feel uncomfortable, but he hasn't done anything to reflect to give me that any inkling that he is racist, you know what I'm saying? Who's really has the issue? Because he's going on by his life. And I'm sitting here secretly mad at him. And then I'm coming up with bullshit in my head. I'm trying to get people to look at it from a different stance. It's like, I know racism exists. This country was built on it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, bro, it's like, okay, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Because we can sit back and be like, he's racist. Okay, impeach him. I don't give a fuck. I didn't vote for him, bro. I voted for Hillary, even though I didn't want to. But that's a whole other subject. I didn't want to. Because of the crime bill that Joe Biden wrote. Yep. Yes, Joe Biden wrote the crime bill. So before we want to jump out bill. there and be like, let's go, Joe, he wrote that shit. And like I said, people can change. But like I said on my post on Facebook that nobody liked or even he even shared. Of course, not. if Trump would have said that shit. Oh, my God. I can read you what he said, what Joe Biden said, if you want me to. And like I said, I understand how it comes off a certain way. I'm not defending the man, bro. I don't know him. Um, like I said, I didn't vote for him. It was really the last two evils I chose Hillary because I was like, well, I like Bill. And that was ignorant of me. That's ignorant of me and I will do better next year. But at the same time, bro, we got to stop doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to get facts because all that shit going on on Facebook now, a lot of that shit is bullshit, bro. A lot of that shit is bullshit. And I see a whole bunch of y'all sharing that shit and it's like, I ain't got time to be typing these paragraphs, bro. My fingers get tired. Because it's like, damn. No 
and I and I do it on both sides. And anyone who's been my friend, who's a conservative liberal, they will tell you, I will defend the other side. I'm always being a devil's advocate, and that's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to provide perspective to the situation. Like I said, deals with the facts. That's the reason why I brought it up, and I understand it's a touchy subject, but we need to have these conversations because if we don't, how we're gonna how we're gonna move forward. In other words, how we're we gonna move forward. So, if you feel like I'm, if any like you, anyone else feel like I was an Uncle Ruckus or a coon for that, that's fine. But the passion of this coon is that I love my people. I will never turn my back on them. But at the end of the day, I'm also a human being, bro. And then, like I said, I'm not too religious, but I am spiritual. And I do believe there's a God. You know what I'm saying? I am independent. If you look at it like as far as politically, political wise, and I just want the people to move forward, bro. Because all this simple shit, all this stupid ass, dumb ass, fake news shit is wrong. And all we're doing is have the younger generation come up. They're going to think this shit is real. They're already on the phones. And if we're sitting here bickering about lies, how are we going to move forward as a country? I see where you're coming from because... That's it. That's all I have to say on that, man. It's always good to have both sides, regardless of what you do. So... I understand yeah. where you're coming from, but that's that's why I I said you kind of sound like Uncle Ruckus because it looked like you were trying to like defend him with all the stats. That's why. So, right, right. But I didn't because the thing is we already know the the bad things that he's done because that's all we hear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I just want to say that you know what I'm saying. But I could I could do I could do the same thing for Obama. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And I was just what I was trying to correlate between the two is that. I mean, I didn't vote for him because he was black. I voted for him because of hope and things he was going to do. He was in a recession. I feel like he could do it. Um, <clears throat> but if Romney or McCain would have won, I would have had no issue with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I've been drinking too much. Um, but anyway, but I understand where you're coming from, and I respect that. You know what I'm saying? And, and we need that. And if I'm ever wrong, I'm not always right. I just believe what I believe, and you know what I'm saying? And like I said, Apologies to anyone that felt that way. I just felt like we needed to hear that because no one is saying it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like only one who's saying it is Fox News. And like I said, I'm not conservative. I'm not on the right. I'm definitely not a leftist. I'm I'm straight down the middle. False. But the UFC fighter girl that I was telling you all about the other night said that shit. So, see, right. So, like I said, if that makes me a, a coon, or you know, I, I have self hate. Which we're gonna speak on next week, um, or we can speak on it with Carnage, whatever. I know he went to talk about it. If that's how it is, that's how y'all view it, then you can suck my dick straight up. From the that's back, that's not me. From the back, in cadence, in cadence. That's, that's not who I am. And if you know me, you know I'm all the way authentic. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I've been out there. I've been out there in Claremont. I've been out with the Bloods. You know what I'm saying? Ask about me. Ask about what I've done for the black folks secretly, but I don't speak on it, bro. I don't speak on it nothing. I'm always trying to progress. I'm always doing shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but like I said, I respect that, man. I know I got a little heated, but I'm cool. I'm right. hot as a bitch, though. That's because you black as hell. And first of all, I had to say, all, bro, the, the mood was kind of getting down. Someone had to spice it up right quick. I'm cussing you out while I'm muting my shit. Bang. That's exactly what you sound like. Keep that shit muted. Yeah, keep that same energy. Can we pause for first? a station identification and so I can figure this fucking Skype shit out? Yeah, because your shit was trash. Your shit was fuzzy, too. I should have screenshot the shit. Welcome back to the Life Podcast. Uh, right now, we got Carnage Beats one on one for interview. Uh, right now, he has a project coming in that he's working on. Uh, Carnage, introduce yourself, bro. Yeah, what's good, everybody? Carnage Beats, producer, rapper. I be, I basically do everything. I mix and master everything I do. I do everything. Groundwork, record. I do everything myself because I feel like, you know. If you can't do it yourself, then, you know, who can do it for you? Only you know how you want your music to sound. So, you know, it's all from within. So, you know, basically it. I feel you. All right. So I got a few questions for you. Yeah. All right. One of them is, what style do you see your music at? Um, 
basically when it comes to my music, I really don't try to put myself in a box. I mean, I know everybody, you know, they always say that, you know, like, oh, my music is so different. I, I really don't try, like, to do anything. I just basically just, it comes from, like I said, within. Like, my style of music, I feel like it, it can fit anything because I'm, I'm very versatile. Or I try to be versatile. Like, um, like just for instance, like, you look at my last project, Anxiety, um, that's, I feel like that's all, a little bit of something for everybody. Like, you got, like, the soft, mellow, kind of, I guess, R&B-esque kind of tracks. And then, you know, you got the stuff, the hard shit from the street niggas. And then you got also got some shit that has some meaning to it. Because I feel like with a, when it comes to albums, like, I feel like, especially, like, in today's day and age, people, like, if you if you listen to a Gunna project, you know, no, no disrespect on Gunna, but, like, if you listen to, like, a Gunna project, you know what you're going to hear. I feel like when it comes to me, it's like you really don't know what to expect because I try to do something to fit everybody, you know. I look at people like Drake, you know, like one of my biggest inspirations because if, if you listen to a Drake album, you you got a little bit of something for everybody. I always feel like, you know, somebody told me once before, like, you you need to go for the uh, the uh, the four for four rule when it comes to making, like, projects and making music. Like, you got to have, like, a good four club tracks, you know, shit that you can bump in the clubs and get the, you know, the ladies, you know what I'm saying, moving and shit. You got to have something for the street niggas. And then you got to have something for, like, the slow, you know, lovey-dovey type shit. And then you just got to have some shit that, like, kind of storytelling that have a meaning to it. So to answer the question, I really don't really have a certain style. I just kind of go forever. I feel like, you know, talking about doing a song about, basically. All right. So you mentioned Drake yeah. as one of your, your influences. Who else is a big influence on your style and your music? Oh, for sure, Michael Jackson. Even though, like, I'm not making no kind of disco s like, I ain't making no disco tracks and nothing like that. But, I mean, I, I just look at the work ethic that he had. You know, when you look at songs like Billie Jean, a lot of people don't know, like, songs like that took three years to make, and that's just a one single song. Uh, you know, people have different workflows. Like, some people, they can go in the studio. You hear it all the time. They're like, oh, yeah, man, we was in the studio last night cooking up, like, 12, 10 songs. You know, but I feel like that's like, uh, like Joe Budden has said this before. He's like, it's microwave music. You know, it's like shit that like you can kind of like it don't really it don't really last long. Like for me, I, I I take my time with it. I make sure if I hear something like um because I know a uh, dream um Deuce he used to, he always tell me like you know man like you know you need to stop listening to your songs every day because it kind of stops my creative flow. But I feel like the reason why I do that I, like right, even right now I, I I go back and I listen to the same songs I just made because I feel like I always I always want more. You know, I feel like I can always go back and. Fix it up, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, not to cut you off. Uh, who who told you that, by the way? Deuce. Who's that? You. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my bad, Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> my bad, Uncle Ruckus told me that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. Listen, <laughs> listen, y'all know how I get down. Don't play with me. <laughs> Don't play with me. Man. I'm a man. I owns mine. I wear mine. Right. I wear mine. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I like to sit on my stuff. Oh, you know, man. I like to make sure that. I can sleep with it. If if I can't, if I go to sleep at night, I have to listen to a song that I made, and, and I feel like I still some more that I can add to it, and I feel like it ain't done. Like I, I don't make nothing that I can't listen to myself, basically. All right. So going with all that, what are some of your creative juices and flows? How do you work that? Like, I know everyone has their own way of creating. Of this is how my formula is. What is some of yours? So that way, when the people behind you, they be like, oh, Carnage does this. Let me see if this works for me. If not, let me tweak it. What's some of your creative ways how you get get stuff going? Damn, I'm so glad you asked that question. I've been waiting to get that question. That's a good-ass question. Um, basically, for me, it's different. Like, I can't, to be honest with you, like, God is my witness. I, I never go into a single, like, uh, session and have, like, a plan. Um most of my songs that I made, the ones that, that really mean a lot to me, the ones that are like my favorites, is that it just happens in the moment. Like uh, sometimes it could be I start making a beat and I like I really fuck with it and then I'll start writing to it immediately. Sometimes I'll make a beat, then maybe two, three months down the road, I start writing to it. Sometimes I'll be at like work or something, riding. Like my, my process is different. It varies from song to song. If it's like more so of a club song, what I'll do is I kind of look for like references. So like I'll listen to something like, I never will listen to like a. I have a song on this project where it's it don't it, it's not really my kind of style, but I was listening to a lot of like Gunna, Lil Baby, and shit like that, and th th that that kind of made me want to go in there and start like doing something like that. So um, it just depends on the song. To be honest with you, most of the time it, it goes to me yeah. just making the beat, 
feeling something, if I feel the inspiration, like when I'm making a beat or when I'm making a song, I start working on it in about 10, 15 minutes. If I don't feel a connection with it, I, I scrap it and go to the next one. And I mean, I remember uh, he, Deuce, he saw me, uh, he saw me making a beat one time. And uh, he was like, why, why you stop making it? He's like, why, why you, why you, uh, he's like, why you delete that? Cause I'm like, I ain't feeling it. And you know, a lot of people don't understand that about me. Like I can't, I don't like to sit on something too long. Cause I feel like if you sit on something too long, you start to, you start to hate it, you know? And I, so I feel like I, I always like, I'm in, I'm in like a fast paced mood. Like if I don't feel that connection with it immediately, it's like, if I don't feel that love connection, I, it's, it's no point. So, I mean, I really don't have a, a, a certain type of method. It's just, you know, I feel like if I could tell anybody who's listening to this right now, who's an up and coming artist, I feel like you should definitely just let God, you know, bring, bring the music to you. Don't force it. Cause when you force it, that shit sound like trash. You're going to scrap that shit. It ain't going to come out sounding the way you want it to sound. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so Hey, uh, Hey Carnage, this is Deuce. Uh, how's it going? So I got a question for you, bro. Um, I know you're rapping and everything. And I can tell, um, <laughs> long, because it's a long process you know it's just people people don't understand how hard it is when you when you make songs and uh, you, nigga, you make nigga, i'm talking about he asked you a question and you went on for 15 minutes <laughs> this whole episode about to be long as end game bro this shit about to be like longer than end game bro <laughs> we going on past two hours. it ain't it ain't a simple it ain't a simple answer it's just it's different it's just bro i had to pull my shit up to the laptop nigga that's how the struggle is real. and you can't say nothing you need to go back on my mode <laughs> you can't say nothing. This man, at least he ain't calling in for the breakfast club. Like was, oh, I'm saying, hey, hey, exactly. <laughs> he ain't calling in for the. Hey, I, you know. Hey, this man had him. <laughs> <laughs> you know man, this is probably gonna be the last one. It's 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 probably like a two point uh, a two part question. Um, one, your new album. What to? Pretty much, what are you trying to to put out? And. Second part is what's your future plans for the album? You going on tour? You can, how you gonna promote it? Stuff like that. You feel me? Yeah. All right. Let me try to make this as short as possible. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, yeah, oh. sure. Let me get straight. <laughs> oh, let me get straight to the 15 point. Fifteen in the top. Nah, I don't fit Uh My plans for this album, though, for real, is just to um, honestly just to I want people to. When they hear this, they want. To, I want them to hear the growth. Like, I want them to know that, like I, it came from a long way. Because if you listen to Anxiety from Antisocial to now, you know my upcoming project, which I will be announcing the um, the name of the project soon. So stay tuned for that. You can follow me on Instagram Carnage Beats. But um, I want when people hear this album, I want them to know, like, damn man, this man that came a long way. I've really been studying my craft, and I take this shit very seriously. And uh, my plans for it, I don't really want to say too much right now because I don't want to spoil anything. But it. I do have really huge plans that I'm working on, and uh, I think it's going to be really good. I think everybody's going to really uh, enjoy this uh, project. Oh, I'd like to thank you for having the shortest answer about that. Exactly. I appreciate that. See, y'all was trying to roast, acting like I can't have no short-ass answers. Man, even your joint on abortion, this nigga went on longer than me. Hey. <laughs> she was looking down her phone like... Nah. Right, he's saying he know what to say. Exactly. Yeah, I get passionate when it comes to music. I get passionate. I'm sorry, I can't. No, nah, even on the abortion subject, bro, you went on the whole soliloquy for like 14 days. <laughs> this is like so. He's like, he got light skin on, licking his lips. He's like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, wrong, you know what I'm saying? Ah. I love all my women. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do so much shit. You feel me? Oh, you all know, sit down with your uncle Ruckus. I hate niggas. I can't stand the motherfucking nigga. Oh, okay. like, you, you might as well go ahead and say Go ahead, keep on it. Alright, you wanna roast nigga? I'm not meat <laughs> meal. You not Drake. We can start uh, yeah, right now. Gonna get back to back. This long in the end game, so we gotta cut this short. <laughs> Alright, but uh Carnage Beats, man, appreciate you coming through, giving this interview. Uh let them know where you can find them. Spell your name, because some people spell it wrong. You can find me on Instagram at Carnage Beast. That's K A R N A G E B E A T S. Uh, that's basically the same thing on everything Snapchat. Follow me on Instagram. That's why I'm gonna be announcing the name of my album, uh, all the track listing, everything. So, yep, that's basically it. All right, so get your ass up so I can give him this gem so we can get the hell over up out here. Yeah, I'm, I'm older though. But anyway, let me get all this gem so we can get the yeah. fuck up out of here, the man. Gem of the night. All right, so gem of the night. So it's about trademarks and ownership. Um, it's important. Anything you do to have ownership, 
And so what I wanted to do was kind of give y'all a little bit of my process. Um, <clears throat> I ain't going to go into it too much because we want this shit to be longer than Endgame. But pretty much what I did was, especially for this podcast, um, what I did was go on, I Googled Federal Trademark uh, Search because they have two different trademarks. They have one for your state, one for the federal. I wanted some federally like federal wide because I feel like, of course, federal government and I want to have ownership. And the reason why I want to have ownership is because anyone I know like successful, they always tell me like it's important to have ownership. So I wanted to own the light podcast, live independently and function in our environment. And so, um, well, all of us. So that's what I did. I went in there and they got, if you go on Google <clears throat> and I'm going to do it, I'm doing it right now. So that way I can walk you guys through. So if you go on Google and you look up, just type in trademark search, right? You pull up trademark search. All right. And if you scroll down, it's going to be the one that says the USTPO.gov. You're going to click on that where it says search trademark database. All right. Once you get to that page, you're going to click on search our trademark database, right? T-E-S-S, test. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come to these two boxes at the top. You're going to see where it says basic word mark search new user. You're going to click on that one, right? And then in search term, you're going to type in what you want to be. So let's say you want to do... Let's say you um you want to own your premium Snapchat name. So let's say your name was Thoughtalicious. So you'll type in Thoughtalicious, right? <laughs> hey, listen, bro. My bad. We can edit that one out so nobody won't take it. And then you're going to submit query. And then what's going to happen is when you submit it, it's going to search their data to see if anyone else has patent or trademarked the name. So um if, ha- if it hasn't, then the next thing you can do is you go to home and then you're going to start yourself an application and then we'll go to that whole process, but it's going to run you about 225 bucks and also the same amount for employee ID numbers, but we'll get into that as I get into that. But I figured that's just something to know if you're someone who really is like into like, you know, saying starting a business and doing the right way, not doing this like frugazy way. Ownership is the way own your shit because you can have something right now. You can have a clothing line and it could be called um, just like, that delicious clothing, but someone can come trademark it and patent it, and then Guess come what? take it from shit. Right, no more. it ain't yours no more. So you, I feel like y'all should know about that. Oh wait, that's ESPN. Uh, let me get a different one for Jim. See, night. there you go. You talking about not me not doing shout outs and you <laughs> trying to do the same yeah, thing? Yeah, ESPN is a good shout out for real. Hey, so we need Pornhub and ESPN. Send them ads, bro. Sponsors, please. Thank you guys again for listening to the Life Podcast. Uh, please tune in for next week for the next episode. Before we leave, let's each give our IGs once again so that way if you guys have any questions or have any comments, you can hit one of us up. Mine is dreamcatcher underscore the prince. All right, mine, this is Deuce Wayne, is uh, Goaty Deuce, G-O-A-T-Y underscore D-E-U-C-E 2-7, that's on IG. And uh, if you want to holler at me on Snapchat, whatever, it's uh, G underscore double 22. So uh, also, um, very soon, real quick, before Ant going to his, we got the website coming up soon, so where we can have it to where you guys can submit questions and stuff or send us love and stuff like that. And another way, if you want to support us, maybe financially, um, if you go on Anchor, there's an option to where it says you can support the podcast. And any money that you send will go 100% towards the podcast, improving everything towards the future. So if you guys want to do that, you can check that out. That's on anchor.fm. It's on our page. So if you follow that, Whatever you can see right there, donate whatever. If you don't, it's all good. Much love. Yeah, Much love. we we need it for the money. Yeah, I'm glad y'all listening. To be honest. Yeah, real shit. Uh, mine is mine's the easiest. Mine's Ant underscore yeah. Car eighty eight. I want to give a shout out to Castro for doing his thing where he's at right now. Um, Hell yeah, he's the one working Hell on that yeah. website. Just Queen. To give him a little shout out, but Facts. that's all Facts. I gotta say. Yeah. All right, guys, that's life. You're.